uh, class. Her name is Gabriela Torrealba. Um, she works for a French uh, company called TransDev. Uh, her, uh, she currently works there and is a learning project manager. She's gonna be talking uh, briefly about the, the work that TransDev does and what she does as a learning project manager. Uh, so kind of like, you know, providing uh, such a little bit of an insight of what the, what the, uh, what a, a person who works as a project management in, in, in more in the learning settings uh, does on a, on a daily basis. Remember, this is uh, this week is more focused or entirely actually focused on career exploration. So all these speakers, what they want to bring to you guys is that information, kind of like learn, you know, about different industries and, 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 and the variety of jobs that are out there, you know. She's also going to be um, providing some information about digital learning and resources. Welcome, Gabriela. Thank you so much for uh, uh, participating for the second time. I think this is the second time that you are part of Job Club. Yeah, that's right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I hope that you're doing well. Super interesting um, participations from, <laughs> from the previous speaker. So as uh, Luisela said, my name is Gabriela Torralba Marquez. I'm a learning project manager at an international company uh, called TrendStev. I am currently in Paris, France, which is where the company's headquarters are located. However, this uh, company has a lot of uh, different offices around the world, which I'm going to give you an insight later so that you can also have uh, information about the company and, and what we do. So, uh, Luisela, I'm going to take over to uh, share my sure. screen. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thank you. So you can have a, also a visual part of this. I hope that you guys are all see uh, my screen maybe. Yeah, you're good. We can see it. Okay, perfect. So as, as I said, um, TransDev company, we're a mobility company, which means that we're a global operator of, of mobility solutions. What, what what consider mobility solutions? So buses, trains, tramways, ferries, anything that really allows you to move from one place to another. We work with the private and public sector and we work with uh, local governments for us to give them the technical solution, the know-how, even the fleet. For example, in the US, we have uh, quite a few um, bus lines and I'm gonna send you the website so that you can also check out by yourself and, and see if this is something that, uh, that could be very interested uh, for you. So we provide about 11 million passenger trips every day and our technologies are being used. We're transforming into being a more environment friendly. So 100% uh, electric fleet in the Netherlands, uh, biodiesel, any other type of technology that really uh, lets us transition and obtain uh, uh, the sustainable development goals in 2025. So we're connecting, of course, communities, we're connecting uh, people in universities, we're really empowering people to be able to transport from one way to another, which uh, we see it as, uh, of course, that's almost like a fundamental right to be able to, to move every day. And we have been feeling it more uh, <laughs> during confinements. They really need and necessity to, to be able to move from one place to another in a clean space, uh, in a safe space. So this is in, in a nutshell what, what my company does. Uh, so numbers, as I said, we're situated in 11 countries uh, in the US being one part of them, Canada, uh, Colombia, Chile, um, Morocco, and Europe, as well here in, in France, of course, which is where headquarters are, Australia, and New Zealand. So a lot of opportunities uh, all over. We have uh, 85,000 employees, and of which 70% are actually our drivers of our fleets, because this is really the heart of our company. 
Uh, I work in the headquarters, but of course, uh, this is a mobility uh, company. So they can be bus drivers, uh, tram drivers, ferry drivers. So this is what the big part of our employees take part of. And we currently have 17 different methods of transportation as, as we have said. Uh, so more specifically, my job in Transdev, I am a project manager uh, for learning projects, which means that I coordinate and I manage uh, projects that are uh, linked to the learning and development of our employees in the company. So training and development, career development within the company, it's a necessity for us, which is why we're found in human resources departments. So what I do on, on a day-to-day -day life, and of course I'm, I'm gonna show you a demo of some of the projects that I'm working on, is really uh, cooperate with the different departments of our company, depending on the necessities on the company's strategy. For example, this year, um, one of our main strategies are environment, our uh, diversity and inclusion, our digitalization of, of all the our procedures of, of, of course, the, the, the way that we work has been transformed. So uh, I accompany these departments uh, into providing and to development and uh, developing solutions that, uh, that training solutions to, to be deployed on, on our uh, employees. Uh, so digital learning, I'm more specialized. Of course, the coronavirus pandemic has greatly changed the way that we learn uh, this year. In France, our teams in France have uh, come from uh, in the majority face-to-face -face training. So in-class trainings, the typical training that we're really used to, to 80% of their training has been their training and training material has been digitalized. So this is how much we have transformed in, in since the, the beginning of the pandemic. And this has accelerated the really the taking, really going into, into digital learning and, and assuming it and transforming it and really, really disrupting uh, the way that we work. So of course our, our employees have been having to develop new skills for this. Uh, I currently work in a project called Moving Digital, which is accompanying our employees to be able to know how to handle Microsoft Office uh, tools, which is well, we're, we're, we know Zoom, and I think Zoom is the most popular way for us to chat and, and call in the professional field. We use Microsoft, we use Microsoft Teams, but it's only, these always also comes with a variety of other tools that we're using uh, to be able to work in a collaborative way. For example, we have Teams, which is our, our daily chat and, and visual call. Uh, we have a whiteboard, which is like our digital canvas so that we can kind of brainstorm, that we can put post-its, we can put stickers, we can use your markers. We have Planner, which is uh, an, another application that Microsoft has to organize our tasks in a very efficient way. So of course, it's it's very easy to say, oh yeah, let's go into digital learning, but we really need to accompany this uh, this this transformation of, of the way that we work, of the way that we learn. And this is exactly what we're, what my work has been mostly focused on in, in the past year. Uh, and of course, uh, how to manage things differently, how to have a, how to be able to learn how to handle your work and life balance, working from home. In the US, of course, there has been a, a lot of really, really strict measures. In France, we have been uh, in really uh, tough lockdowns for, for a few months with curfews at, at 6 p.m. So this has really pushed us into, into being, into having to accompany our, our employees to train on, on how to be able to use these tools. So this is one of the big examples of the projects that I'm working on. So this is a very satisfying job because it's really the learning part and, and we're helping our employees uh, develop to their pot potentialities. So when we talk about digital learning, uh, we always get a lot of questions, like what exactly is it? Is it, a, is it like a video? Is it we have some like online courses. There's a lot of ambiguity in, into what it is. So 
I'm going to talk about that it's a, large, a larger scope than most people think when we talk about digital learning and it has been growing more and more different methods of, uh, of making something uh, a training digital. So digital, digital learning is pretty much any method that is accompanied by technology that has digital content and that is practiced uh, in a pedagogic way using technology. So technology as a tool, we, when we talk about technology as a tool, we mean, of course, access to the cloud, like internet, but also the devices like being smartphones, because we're learning a lot with Duolingo, for example, is, is a really, really good, uh, yeah, it's a really good example of, of, um, of an application that really teaches you Duolingo. It's, it's this application to learn languages and you have like little challenges every day and you have like a little birdie that every day tells you, hey, let's, if you're learning Spanish, hey, you haven't practiced anything today. So smartphones, it's, it's becoming a really, really powerful tool, tool to learn. And digital contents, of course, any material which is being delivered uh, through technology it can be videos, uh, it can be like infographics, and we were going to see that uh, later on in the presentation. So this is in, in a nutshell what digital learning is. So it doesn't really go to a specific method, but it's really anything that makes use of these three uh, these these three um, elements. So of course, as we have said, it this can be in the form of, uh, for example, micro learning, and this is a really interesting one because it it pushes instead of one big class that we're used to, it gives you the learning content, the content of the of the training into little small capsules that you can see all the time. And I'm gonna show you a project that I'm working on that is using this methodology. So this creates more commitment, more engagement in a really like more easy form to be able to learn every day. So it's more in little capsules instead of just seeing like this huge master class of one hour and a half. So this is a really interesting method of learning that has been growing in the past few years. Uh, we have uh, mobile learning. So as I said, it's something that is becoming also really powerful because we're becoming every day, uh, we have more technology, we have, uh, of course, better phones, but we're also moving very, very fast. We're always running from the metro to, to the street and we're always in constant mobility. So this is a very practical practical tool to be, to be using in a very practical format. We have immersive uh, learning, which one of the best examples, it's virtual reality. Uh, so this can allow you to experience in a low cost, uh, so to say, like these new experiences really, for example, we use it quite a lot in my company for the onboarding process, which is when we have a new employee, uh, we are able to give them these, these classes in which they can see, for example, they can start exploring the headquarters, they can see where the emergency exits are. This can potentially be used to, in the industry, it's being used for, um, for drivers to, to see uh, the rules, like how to drive. This can also be used for safety reasons. So it's, it's a really, 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 um, even though it's a big investment at first, it's actually lowering the cost of a lot of the processes that we're doing in the company. It can also be used in the more classical form. Uh, when we talk about digital learning, this is the e-learnings or massive online uh, courses, which I will be sharing some platforms, some very interesting platforms that you can see. Some of them can be certifying, but they're longer. They're not as opposed to micro learning, which is little capsules of learning every day or, or for five minutes a day, for example. This is really more of like a classical learning that is uh, normally longer. Uh, we also have the virtual class trainings or the webinars, which are becoming super, super uh, also very well known right now. Everyone wants to do a webinar on on something. Even this is a <laughs> this could be considered like that's a, what I was going to say. Training. Exactly. Yeah. 
any uh, like me talking about what digital learning is like this is a virtual class training this is a webinar and especially being everybody being remotely and in lockdown uh, some from sports uh, even like workout sessions that I've I've been doing <laughs> every day these are small webinars so this is a, this can be on different subjects of course and uh, they can also be in the form of series games. And this is actually one of my favorites because we're trying to adapt trainings into a sort of video games. So these are a uh, type of training that you get to put into in a scenario as a video game character. And you kind of explore and, and uh, you can have like different actions that you can make and that can change the outcome for example, in my company, we we uh, have deployed a serious game on diversity and inclusion on cybersecurity, which is uh, one of the topics that, that you have discussed uh, previously. So in the cybersecurity, we have like, this character that comes in and he gets asked some questions like, oh, um, should you should you like download? What is the best practice if you find like a lost uh, USB drive? So the character will like put it on his on his uh, on his computer, and then he would get like this huge alert, and it's like, no, you're getting a virus. But if you make a good decision and you give it to the to the front desk, then he will get you will get rewarded points because this is the good practice that you should be taking. So serious games are also becoming really really interesting in, in the field of digital learning, and it's one of my favorites because it's gamified, like it's just like playing a video game. And they use very good technology too. So uh, some of these you have might might have already already seen. Of course, the serious games you get gamification and badging. You get like little uh, maybe like little stars. Or you can also like play with other people. Uh, you can include they can include like chatbots in in a quiz that you're interacting with with a computer. As we said, they can include videos and even discussion boards in which you can interact more with the other students. Because one of the main challenges of digital learning is the feeling of isolation. So discussion boards are also becoming very powerful in the development of, of digital learning opportunities, which is also like gamification. You can also interact with other people, chatbots. You also feel a little bit of more interaction. Discussion boards is it's being like the highest level of interaction, and uh, which is what we want to achieve also, especially now uh, <laughs> that we're all so far away. So one of the benefits, of course, is that it, it enables the learner of digital training to be able to learn anywhere at any time at their own pace. So this is one of the most interesting things about uh, deploying digital learning opportunities. And of course, for you to be able to access these trainings, uh, no matter what you are, no matter what your budget is, you will always be able to find something that is according to your needs, to your rhythm, to your, if you're working or if you're studying like this, this is the most flexible type of learning that there could be. It can also, of course, provide an international dimension because you can access documents and opportunities that are in other countries that you wouldn't be uh, normally be able to have. For example, me, I'm, I'm in Paris, you guys are in Philadelphia. <laughs> So this is, we're actually living right now the benefits of being able to connect and learn from through digital learning and even access uh, better learning opportunities. Uh, the fact that it's so flexible, it can also provide, of course, more engagements because you can, you're finding things that are interesting, that are more interesting to you, more adapted to your to your day-to-day -day life. So of course, you're, uh, most of the time you're gonna be more committed, even though, if, you really have to have a little bit more structure because uh, normally uh, these are self-paced, so nobody will be behind you like, hey, it's time, let's go to the classroom. So this is actually a positive in another point of digital learning. And uh, yeah, so like it really empowers you uh, to be able to learn continuously all the time and really create that culture of improvement that is so, so important in your professional development. Uh, like never stop learning pretty much. This is the, the biggest message that we're always passing on. 
uh, and really take advantage of the, this transformation of training opportunities. Uh, it's being democratized. It's not. Uh, it's it's no longer becoming an exclusive, very expensive solution to learn. This is actually, especially because of the pandemic, there are so many people putting so many trainings out there for a very very low cost. At the end, I'm going to share uh, some some examples, some websites that you can check out that are basically like for most of them free. So really uh, take advantage of the situ situations to, to, to continue uh, to improve yourself and develop your career. Uh, so the, also the objective to really explain what exists is to kind of ask you like, now that you know what is out there, you recognizing how you like to learn will, will help you choose better. <laughs> which type of opportunities you want to follow. Not everybody learns the same. Not everybody learns the same pace. So it's very important that you identify also what is the, the best way that I like to learn and, and make an informed decision so that you don't, uh, you don't abandon what, what you're learning, uh, your training opportunity. So this is also very important. So from what I explained, do you have some feedback of some of these trainings that you have been able to follow or some of, the, some of them that you would like to try, like uh, I'd love to get your feedback on this. Anyone out there? <laughs> so Luisela, how, how do you like to learn? Nike's, for example? Yeah, uh, micro learning seems really, like seems like a, I, I, have, I have previous experience doing micro learning and I really think it's, 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 very, it's very useful. Um, and I don't think I have had any experience uh, with uh, virtual reality. Yeah. reality. Yeah, that 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 one. Uh, I was uh, I was surprised about the serious game that you were mentioning at your work. I didn't I didn't know honestly that uh, human resources departments in different companies are using it as uh, as a tool to integrate in the, in the boarding process. I, I thought that was really yeah. amazing. And even one of the most Very interesting, interesting is also one on diversity and inclusion because it makes you a position like how to recognize situations that you're not being inclusive or offensive, like racially offensive or uh, making a, a sexist remark. This, these are some of the role play. It's a lot of role play, so to say. So these are interesting in yeah. It just makes it like more, more interactive. Yeah, because I, I still remember I'm I'm talking like about the, the 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 first onboarding process I went through was uh back in 2006 and you it, 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 even though it was online but it, it was it was just you know like a little bit more boring because it was not really interactive they it, it was just like a bunch of information that got thrown you and just go through it yeah. right so it makes it like more interactive and in I, I would say will like also help to kind of like make or make people more reflective of, of, about whatever the, the topic is, is trying to cover that particular uh, learning. Yeah, for sure. Does anybody have any, uh, also any questions? No. Well, maybe I can show you just yeah. a two minute demonstration of what a micro learning, uh, <laughs> especially since, since you were able to, to talk about it. Let's yeah, see, that'd be great. see my screen. This is a big project that I have been working on for, for about a year now. Do you see my, apart from the presentation, do you see yes. my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, perfect. So this is actually a micro learning, uh, mobile learning training. Uh, we can just see that your PowerPoint. Oh, only my PowerPoint. Is that what you want to okay. Yeah. Then let me try to reshare my screen really quickly. Now, do you see anything apart from the PowerPoint presentation? Yeah. Now I can see uh, courses. Yes. 
So this is a demonstration of one of the projects that I have been managing for the past year. So as I said, this is a mobile training. I'm actually accessing it from my computer right now, but this is an application that we have developed for, for employees in, in the company. And the way that we, have for, that we have made it, we have set it up for it to be more interactive, more, more digestible, and even more um, pedagogic for, for the employees was to make it into micro learning. So as we can see now, we have chosen uh, 10 different topics on things that are strategic, on, on topics that are strategic for a company, for example, new ways of working, uh, future of mobility, which is, is related to, to what we do and, and new technologies. So for each topic, we developed, for example, the way that, that we made it is that, and so we try to start with a little quiz using a chat bot as we ex as I explained in, in my presentation. So this is something that gives it a little extra pep and some extra um, interaction. So we get in our, in our cell phones, we're able to respond to the questions and put, put our information. So to see at which level you are, like what is your, what is the knowledge that you have in your course previously to, to following the module. And then we divide it into, into three weeks right here. You can see all the contents, but normally in the first week we deployed the part to understand the topic, learning how to learn. Then the second week get inspired by some ways that we, we see that people are learning to learn or continuously learning. And this part like activate, uh, how, how to more probably like, what are the best practices to have this uh, learning culture always. So we did this, we have set this up. So we have like a compilation of, of different types of content. For example, we're putting some videos, uh, we're including some, some articles that we can access, some podcasts. So really have as much variety of, of content uh, that we can provide for, for uh, our employees to be able to understand better, to really absorb a lot of knowledge and put in practice what we're trying to teach them. Of the, we have like a small review. So this is our structure. This is what we call like micro learning because yeah, it makes really it more interactive won't take too. them. Yeah, exactly. That's, like that's, that's what them. I really love about micro learning. Sorry? That's what I really love about micro learning in general. Like it is like a more interactive way of learning. I actually got the opportunity to get a certification last year and it was like a just micro learning. That's yeah. pretty much the way I yeah, was able yeah. to get it. It was it was amazing. It was a really good experience. Yes, for sure. It's definitely engaged and, and just it's so innovative that people it's it's not a mandatory um it's not a mandatory solution for employees. And still like we have had so many people, we have about like 300 people that are following the, the, the application and constantly exploring uh, one of the topics that we're providing. So yes, this is actually one of the, one of the examples that I wanted to show you of what a micro learning could look like, uh, what, it, what mobile learning could look like. Um, oh, it also offers a mobile version, so people can do it yes, from their phones. This is or, actually, uh, this yeah. is actually. I mean, we're seeing the web version, but this is all done through the cell phone. And nice. of course, we have, as I explained, the discussion boards in which people have have been providing some feedback, asking questions. So this is also a powerful tool to have in in learning. Um, platforms so that people interact with one another and kind of like exchange experiences. Great. Uh, Gabriela, so um, we are uh, running a little bit of, um, yes, run out of time. So yeah. I know you wanted to share with them some uh, digital uh, resources uh, yeah. currently available. So maybe we could uh, touch a little bit on that before we yeah. leave. 
So I'm gonna have, of course, Luisa, you can you can share this presentation with yes. all of her attendees. But one of the one uh, one of the solutions that I recommend the most. So I put kind of like this one, Sir multilingual, so you can find them in in in, in most languages. But EDX is a great platform. So it allows you to explore any topic that you want and you can have like a free version. Of course, you won't have access to maybe like the more profound information of the courses that you want to take. But EDX and Coursera, they let you access a free version of the courses, which is already enormous of if you really want to learn in a topic. Uh, so these are, um, yeah, like Udemy, it's also very short um, modules that exist. Uh, check out if there is a topic that, uh, that that you would like to learn more in. A lot of organizations have just like a free library of educational resources that you can also check out. For example, UNESCO, they have like a whole platform on, on, on distance learning, on digital learning that, that is completely free. Uh, I recommend you to check out like university pages. They also have a lot of a lot of uh, modules that you can you can also check out. So we can share this with Sal maybe so that they can access directly and you can explore. Yeah, I will add that to the follow follow up email with them. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So uh, don't don't hesitate uh, to to also contact me if you have any questions on on Transdev, of course, as a company or as, as what a project manager does day to day or <laughs> especially in the learning department. Yeah, true. Well, uh, and um, there is, is there any questions from you guys before we leave? I know uh, we are past the time, uh, but I just wanna make sure that if you have any questions for Gabriela, you can ask that now, or if not, uh, Obviously, I'm, I'm going to be providing her content information in case you guys want, you know, have any further questions. No? Uh, we're good? Yeah. Yeah, since we're good. Well, thank you so much, uh, Gabriela, for, uh, um, you know, providing all this uh, great information. I, I, you know, this is my personal opinion. I think digital learning is quite... Uh, uh, quite of a feeling topic for me, and, and I feel like there there's so 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 much yeah. to learn in, in in that field, and especially especially now, like after the COVID nineteen pandemic hit, it kind of like boost. It was kind of oh, like yeah, a boost absolutely. to the whole digital learning world and what. It, and and I I think it's, it's it's safe to say like all these type of digital learnings that that you were talking about today, even though they were already out there and were available for uh, for people before the COVID-19 pandemic now were kind of like transforming and they've been like always companies are rethinking it, right? Especially that a lot of companies understood that there's a lot of jobs that can be, that doesn't necessarily need to be done on site yeah. and they can be done like in whatever, obviously doesn't apply to any job. Mm -hmm. And I know that digital uh, digital learning is is part of those big elements, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's um, it's one of the most accessible forms of learning there is, pretty much, if not the most and affordable. I would say it's so very too. affordable. Exactly, it's very affordable, accessible. So it, it's it's a it's a very very powerful tool for organizations, for schools, for universities, for companies like uh, like mine. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I, and, and today was an example of that. Uh, the three guest speakers that we had uh, today uh, and during the whole class, they all brought different um, different options of digital learning. So I really think, and this is uh, this go, goes back to the the, the initial conversation about us as immigrants or refugees or asylees, whoever, whatever the, the immigration status uh, is, is that now that we're here in the United States and, 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 and we want to, you know, have that dream job and we want to become a, whatever we want to become, there, 
there's resources are, are out there that are for us if if we want them. So it is yes, it is, most likely we're not gonna be able right away to get or to work on the job that we want or in the field that we want necessarily. But if you decide to continue with your education and keep improving your uh, level of English, you're gonna be able to be and get where you where you really want to be. I think that's the message that was transmitted today through uh, Gabriela's in her presentation. The same thing goes with Grace and Irene, like in different ways. That's pretty much the message that they 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 wanted to transmit, and the same the same message that I've been wanted to transmit to you. Um, all, uh, all along since we started this program, and especially for you guys, because like I said, you are uh, part of the youth population. So there's great, great opportunities out there for you. So you can make it work as long as you are determined and if you are motivated and, and, and you wanna do it, you can do it. I mean, it, it's, it's not a term, it, you can make it happen. So that uh, that's it for today's class. So of course, you know that uh, we're gonna be seeing each other on Thursday. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the, uh, the minimum amount of people who were willing to go on site uh, with me for uh, the last uh, week. So we are going to finish uh, this program up um, virtually. So see you guys on Thursday and we are going to have another, a, co a couple, uh, a couple more of uh, guest speakers. And and yes, that's it for today's. Remember the Zoom link is still the same. And I'm gonna be sending a follow-up email today because I really wanna make sure that you guys keep uh, the contact information of the three guest speakers that we had today. Thank you so much, Gabriela, once again. Uh, I know it's like we have like six hour difference. Uh, it's night or, uh, already, so yeah. I hope the weather in Paris, it's not, it, it's better than it is here in Philly. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a little bit cold and rainy. Yes, for sure. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. See, well, see you, you see you on Thursday. Thank you, Gabriela. Good luck, good luck for your the exploration. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for your participation again. Now it's nice to see you again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.